We saw how much you guys enjoyed part one of the most terrifying true Reddit stories, so we decided to do another deep dive and we found five more Reddit stories that are even scarier than the last one. And the part one actually got up to 72 likes, so let's try to get it to 100 likes. And maybe this one, let's get it double, maybe 200 likes. These stories are so creepy that like one in particular that we're going to be telling today, I don't know, it's pretty terrifying. Let's jump right into story number one. This one's called, this would have been my last day at the job. I used to work in a nursing home and one day I had a resident refuse to get on the elevator with me stating being scared of the little boy now i shrugged it off until i had another resident come out of his room and ask me for candy for this little boy i decided to ask my mom head nurse and employee of 13 years about what had been happening she had told me that all throughout her years of employment residents periodically reported seeing a young boy he was always wanting to play with them he appeared to all kinds of residents they all reported the same exact thing over a great period of time and when they moved to a new facility the little boy came with them this little boy was particularly fond of those with limited eyes Eyesight. From those residents, the boy was described as having dark black hair, living out in a tent, and saying that he died when a tree fell on him. One night, I was feeding a resident who had recently suffered a stroke. She had lost the use of her right hand and required total assistance. As I was feeding her, I felt a cold hand on my arm. Right then, the resident said, is this your boyfriend? He looks a little too young for you. This resident who saw him passed away that same night. People say that hospitals have to be the most haunted places ever, but do you ever think that residence homes like this could be haunted? I think so. That's pretty creepy. Yes, guys, and as we're going through these stories, let us know your thoughts or if you've gone through something similar mm -hmm. in the comments. This next one is a creepy one. Like just the last video, I cannot see without my glasses, <laughs> so we're gonna pop them on real quick. This second one is called, at least you could market the house as being haunted. And the story goes like this. I I grew up in a house on Long Island, specifically in Brentwood. It was a quiet town for its location. My dad worked as a taxi driver at the time, which meant that he would usually end up coming home early in the morning, and I wouldn't always greet him. One Saturday after we just had moved in, I was watching cartoons as my dad came in. I ran to say hello. My mom hears us from the bedroom and says, hello honey, don't go in the pool. It's not ready yet. My dad and I think that's weird since it's 6 a.m. and we weren't planning on going swimming. We just brushed it off, and he goes on to tell me his usual usual stories of the wild people he picked up throughout the night. We then realized that it was Saturday and my mom was at work. It was only me and him in the house, but the voice sounded exactly like my mother. Fast forwarding a couple weeks, my neighbor came over to welcome us to the town. The neighbors consisted of two mothers, two sons, both around my age, and two little girls, one blonde haired girl my age, and the other a shy brunette that didn't talk much. The other kids and I started to play soccer. As we played, I noticed this little brunette girl was nowhere to be found. Being a curious kid I ran around the property and found her playing in the woods a dangerous area for little kids to play around she asked me to join her but I declined the reaction of everyone as I asked them to get the other girl to join us was puzzling one of the moms responded by saying we only have one daughter but turns out a small brunette girl drowned in my pool 10 years ago with her mother passing soon after from a heart attack and sometimes that's what? why you have to look up the histories of certain areas especially like yeah. where you're living in because you can you never know a lot of places hold a lot of history we recently were featured on a podcast called sip and tea with joey and marie and i actually talk about the history of my house where i live at at the moment but let me just tell you somebody's grandma passed away in the house that i live in right now and there's a lot of stuff that has happened since we moved in that explains why you know this house is kind of like this there was somebody who actually sent in their personal story through email we will be telling her story at the end of these ones and if you guys are ever interested in sending any of your personal you know haunted stories or anything like paranormal occurrences that have happened to you definitely um, send those in because we would love to feature your story on one of our episodes now with story number three this one says it's called a long one but a great one and a scary one too I had a stalker for about two years it started at my first apartment when I was 18 he would do little stuff like stand on my porch and tap on the windows or walk around my backyard I called the cops and they checked it out and saying they didn't see anything after about six months my boyfriend and I decided to go see a concert out of town we left our dogs in the basement and hid the key to the house because my brother would come a few times a day and let the dogs out when we got home things started to get really weird at night we started hearing noises in the attic that was located right above our bedroom the door to the attic was also in our bedroom but we never used it we didn't find out what the noises were until we moved out so when we went up there to get our christmas decorations and saw that someone 
had broken the brick walls apart that separated our attic with the empty apartment next door's attic. So somebody was like digging. That's scary. That is really scary. But the other apartment had a bed in the attic and the other miscellaneous stuff. We moved into the new house and nothing happened until we had been there for about four months. That's when it got really bad. My underwear started going missing and the house would look like it was being looted through. And one night I went outside to let the dogs out and there was a guy outside on the road. He started saying my name over and over and over again. I went inside and called the cops. Sure enough, he's not there. But now at night, I could see him walking up and down the road. The fact that they couldn't like arrest him or anything, yeah. or maybe taking him for like suspicious activity. Poor girl. At least she has a boyfriend with her. That is at true. At least she's not by herself at the house because yeah. that would be even more terrifying. That would. Story number four, it is called the sister never forgot what she saw in the baby monitor. And this is how the story goes. So my cousin around 30 years old had a baby and had one of those baby monitors with a video feed. She was in the living room with her sister watching TV. Her sister gets up to go to the kitchen, swings by the baby monitor to take a look at the baby and goes all white. She slowly walks up to the mother and says, there is a grown up woman with a white dress holding the baby. They were both alone in the house. They both go running into the bedroom only to find the baby in the crib and everything closed. To this day, the sister never forgot what she saw in the monitor that kind of reminded me Heck of the no. yorona that's scary if you guys don't know who the yorona is it's basically the weeping uh woman in a white dress it's an urban legend in mexico she like takes little kids i would probably want my kids to sleep next to me for a while and i'd probably get rid of the baby monitor because i'm like yeah. i don't want to see anything like that again that's yeah creepy. that would be terrifying yeah. now for this last and final story of the reddit stories before we go on with the personal stories mm -hmm. someone sent us this one's pretty creepy this is called i remember seeing a lady's face when i was a kid i remember seeing a lady's face in a doorway grinning at me with what I assumed to be something brown covering her entire face and her teeth. I would see her several times until we moved away when I was five years old. Obviously, my family didn't see her, but my mom got worried when I told her that I saw the lady from the kiosk, which is what I called the lady after I dreamt of her falling down a flight of stairs in a small store not far from our house. And I kid you not, my mom told me a few months ago that in the same store I was dreaming of, a woman had actually fallen down a flight of stairs and had her face torn on the way down, apparently being covered in dried blood when she she was found hence my description of her imagine the look on my face when i heard that i would have turned pale as a ghost that scared me that reminds me of a video that we did almost two years ago on halloween where we also talked about a true scary story of this old lady that was trying to break into the house and then they remember seeing that lady in the grocery stores a week ago oh remember yeah. that that is creepy yeah, yeah and it was this old elderly lady with a creepy creepy like face and huge white eyes who was trying to break into this kid's house with this last and final story that was sent in to us this one actually gave me like goosebumps if you want your story to be featured on a youtube video or on our podcast send them all to the email in the description but let's get into this story she said i hope i'm not too late for my paranormal story but my childhood home was haunted and this happened in puerto rico the first ghost i ever saw was my mother's aunt that was murdered and she was a santera we had everything from black shadows cold spots lights and tvs turning on and off by themselves but my scariest encounter was in my brother's bedroom long story short i got divorced and moved back in there for a little bit and was sharing a room with my brother anyways one night he was out and i was by myself in the bedroom we had three black shadows in the house always peeking through the corner i like got goosebumps and i felt something on my face right now on the last video that we did on the reddit stories there was uh, also a, another paranormal story where there was something peeking a black shadow yeah. peeking on the side of the door i'm scared they had three black shadows in the house always peeking through the corners that night two of them entered the bedroom and started pacing in circles while every single thing in the room was vibrating like we were having an earthquake the big shadow stood by the door like saying you are not leaving the bedroom i had no idea how long this was but it felt like the longest time ever i was so scared because i had no idea why they were doing that because black shadows usually look at you from a distance now that is mm. the first story she sent us there's actually a second story yeah. that she has so let's read her second encounter this second story happened at my grandparents house we are a big family with lots of kids the whole family family used to gather around every Sunday at my grandparents and the kids would always run around and play in the yard. So one Sunday I saw a new kid running around and I was like, who's that kid? Of course nobody could see him and then I turned my head and he was standing next to me. My uncle was sitting next to me and he jumped out of his seat saying, what are you seeing? That was funny. I guess the boy sensed that I saw him and then he just went away. I never saw him again. However, my three year old niece saw him and described him to me. It was the same boy I saw. I saw him over 10 years ago and this happened recently, which is crazy. She was crying so hard 
hard that she didn't even want to open her eyes. I told her every single time you see a ghost, tell them to go away and leave you alone. I recently talked to her and she said she's not seeing ghosts anymore. Thank God. I'm not gonna lie, that one gave me, that gave me chills. Yeah. Both of those stories gave me chills. I'm creeped out, guys. She did say that, you know, she loves our podcast and, you know, she hopes she made the cut, which you did. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sending in your story. Your stories are definitely scary. Just thank you for, your, for, for sharing your experience with, like, the paranormal, you know? Yes. It was super cool to be able to read your stories even though they're really, really creepy. <laughs> yeah. Like we said, if any of you guys want us to tell your stories or maybe want it to be featured on podcasts, TikTok, or even a YouTube video, send them into the email in the description of this video um, because we would love to have a whole YouTube video dedicated to your guys' stories because this was pretty creepy. Make sure you guys drop a like on this video if you want to see more spooky content. Yes. Subscribe. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.